Glad to have you folks out tonight. Appreciate you being here on this beautiful Thursday evening as we come to worship the Lord. And we've made some changes. You probably won't find a hymn book nearby. The reason why you won't find a hymn book nearby is because we're trying to eliminate points of contact that people might have. But hopefully I've chosen some hymns that we'll sing the first and the last verse of that you all know and are familiar with that you might be able to sing in your sleep. And we'll have a word of prayer and then we will have a, <coughs> a hymn or two and then we'll be getting on with our service and we might even get out early tonight. We'll just see how things work. Father, we come and thank you again that we have this time to be able to worship you. We thank you, Father, for your goodness. For these who have come out tonight, even amidst this COVID-19 and coronavirus, that have come to worship you, we appreciate them and their faithfulness. We appreciate all of our people, and even those that have chosen to stay home. We pray, dear Lord, your blessings upon them. And we ask, dear Lord, you watch over and take care of them. Until we can all be back together again, we pray very, very soon. We ask now, Lord, that you will just bless this time and bless your word tonight. Use it to bring glory and honor and blessing to your name. And this, dear Father, we do ask and we pray in the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And for his sake, amen and amen. Our first hymn, we're going to sing the first and last verse of At Calvary. Like I said, it's probably hymns that you can probably sing in your sleep. Uh, Years are spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me, there my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Amen. Hymn number one, well, or the hymn leaning on the everlasting arms, because you don't have hymn books. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't do me any good to give you a page number. <laughs> but I write them down for me so that I know where they're at. <laughs> what a fellowship, what a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning 
from the everlasting arms. Amen. <coughs> Our service this evening is being recorded, and it will be uploaded on YouTube when we can get it uploaded on YouTube. Uh, our new YouTube channel has been a great blessing for our folks and our church, especially during this difficult time that we have been going through uh, with this coronavirus. But we are here tonight. We are practicing our social distancing of uh, being six feet apart, which is good. Continue to practice that. Wash your hands often in a day and just be safe. Because as I mentioned, you know, there's higher risk of being anywhere but church or things that happen to you in your life. So <laughs> why not be at church, I say. Uh, we'll be, uh, we, will be, we will be planning to have our services Sunday morning. They will be different, though. Things will be much different. I have sent a letter out to all of our families. Hopefully you will be receiving it. If you have not, I'll give you a copy of it. I have a copy of extra copies of it. Um, we'll be having two Sunday morning services. The first one will be at 9.30. There will be no Sunday school, no adult Bible studies for the near future. When things get back to normal and we can all get closer again, <laughs> we will look at that. Um, but we'll have a service at 9.30. I recommend that everyone that is... All the senior saints, I recommend, come to the early service. And that will leave room for all the other saints <laughs> and the Baptists <laughs> to come to the second service <laughs> at 11 o'clock. We will be practicing social distancing, making sure that we are sitting six feet apart in every direction. That will mean in the seats that you folks are sitting in tonight, um, in the front of our auditorium that you would sit you would you would sit either as an individual or a couple or a family and then have four chairs between you it's a little more than six feet to your right and to your left and then make sure that there's an empty row in front of you and an empty row behind you be sitting every other row and with that capacity and with the chairs that we have set up in the back, that we've already set up the rows six feet apart, we can probably fit a good number, close to 50 people, inside the auditorium. We'll also be using our fellowship hall, where we can set up 20 chairs six feet apart to accommodate 20 people. Now, even though you may sit together as a family or you may sit together as husband and wife, there'll be no more than 50 people in the building for any one service for this period of time that we are going through. And just do your best to try not to watch TV too much. It might scare you. <laughs> for God has brought us through difficult times. God will bring us through this time. And uh, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Is there anything else? No? Okay. Him will sing, Love Lifted Me, the first and last verse of Love Lifted Me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. <coughs> love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. 
when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Souls in danger, look above, Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea. Moses his will obey. He, your Savior, wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. And nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Amen. And burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Days are filled with sorrow and care, hearts are lonely and drear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Calvary. Calvary, burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near. Troubled soul, the Savior can see every heartache and tear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near. Amen and amen. Long, long ago, in a galaxy far, far away, we were studying the book of 2 Thessalonians. Now, it's been just over two weeks, but it feels like it has been years since we have been together. And it could be, if things change, it may feel like even more years before we do get together. But we were looking at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 through... Started that section through chapter 3 and verse number 5, and we've looked at how the Apostle Paul was giving them going from prophecy to practicality and practical Christian living, replacing the negatives of Satan's lies with the positives of God's truth. And we saw in verses 13 and 14 that the Thessalonian church had believed the word and believed the truth. They saw how... Ah, here we go. There we go saw how God loved them, the first part of verse 13 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and how God chose them for his salvation, set them apart to do the work of spreading the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, how God had called them to the knowledge of the truth of the gospel. And they accepted it, and they 
and God gave them glory as well. The last part of verse number 14. So we come to verse 15 tonight, where the Apostle Paul exhorts them and exhorts us as believers in Christ to guard the truth. Not only are we to believe the truth of the Word of God and the Gospel of Christ, we are to guard it. In verse 15 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the Bible says there, Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Our Father, we thank you again for your word tonight. We pray, Lord, that you will bless this time in the word. May it encourage hearts for time and eternity. And bless our prayer time to come. Father, we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Paul had told the Thessalonians about future rebellion against the truth in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 3. That day that would come of the tribulation, the great apostasy headed up by the Antichrist. But he also warned in his letter that there is a present danger. And that the churches must guard God's truth and not turn from God's truth. To stay by the stuff. There are repeated warnings that are given in the New Testament of being able to try the spirits in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1 to see whether they be of God. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and 2 Timothy chapter 3, it talks about the perilous, perilous times that are to come. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, to name some. See, God works, God works in the world through the truth of his word. And Satan opposes the truth of God's word by submitting his lies. Human nature is prone to believe a lie and to resist the truth. That's kind of how we are as people. And we'd rather sometimes believe the lie than to believe the truth. Satan accomplishes his best work through people in so-called Christian institutions, churches and schools and so on, who do not believe God's truth. They have what, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, they have what is called a form of godliness. But they have denied the power thereof because they have never experienced the power of God's saving truth. There are those who say and profess that they know Christ as Savior, but their lives tell a totally different story. When Paul used the word traditions here in our text, he was not referring to the man-made religious ideas that are not based on the word of God. Because our Lord rejected man's ideas and religious traditions as he debated with the Pharisees back in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 7. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 7. The Bible says there, Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they washed their hands off to eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. And when they come, and when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. 
and many other things, and many other things there be, which they have received and hold as washing of cups and pots and brazen vessels and of tables. You have to understand, back in those days, they didn't have the automatic dishwashers or raise automatic dishwashers, like my parents did. They raised three of them. And they didn't always have the sanitary practices that we have today. So sometimes you would have to eat and your hands were dirty. Sometimes you'd have to use a plate that wasn't totally clean. And the tradition of the elders had said that you, you, if, if, if you don't wash, you don't eat. And nowadays, in our society today, we usually do wash before we eat. At least we wash our hands. In verse 5, it says, Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? but eat bread with unwashing hands. And he said unto them, Well hath Isaiah, or Isaiah, prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, touching, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men, for laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold the tradition of, tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandments of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and mother, and whosoever curses father and mother, let him die the death. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is korban, that is to say, a gift, by whatever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother. Christ was saying there that when the, when the parents get old, children should take care of their parents. I agree with that. I help take care of my parents in the last days of their life as best I could. And I believe that to be true and should be done, if it can be done. Honor your father and mother. First commandment with promise, the Bible says. But the Pharisees, they found a loophole, as they did with most of the law that they taught to people. They didn't honor it. They found a loophole. If I say it is a gift, to give to the church, then I cannot take care of my parents. Making the word of God of none effect in verse 13, Christ said, through your tradition which ye have delivered, as, and many such like things do ye. And there are those who do that. There are those who will go to church on a Sunday and they will follow the traditions of men rather than the word of God. They will practice the traditions of men rather than the truth. And our Lord rejected man's ideas of religious traditions by honoring you need to honor the word of God and follow the word of God. Paul warned against, Paul warned against them in in the book of Colossians chapter 2, and in verse number 8, Colossians chapter 2, and in verse number 8, Colossians 2 and verse number 8, the Bible tells us there, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. As believers, who are we to follow? Christ. Not the traditions and the rudiments of this world. We're to follow the Lord. 
It's sad to see when men who profess faith and people who profess faith argue over men's traditions. And at the same time, reject the simple truth of the word of God. The word tradition here simply means that which is handed down from one person to another. And that's how the word of God is transmitted, is it not? It's handed down from one person to another. From the Sunday school teachers who faithfully taught me the word of God in Sunday school from the age of five when I started going to church on up. Somebody taught them. Somebody taught them. And on and on it goes. The Bible says that, the Bible says Paul told Timothy that we are to commit thou to faithful men the things which we have been taught. And the truth of gospel, the truth of the gospel began as a spoken message, an oral message, proclaimed by Christ to his apostles. And later this truth was written down by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and became Holy Scripture. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3 and verse 16, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, complete, or mature, wanting nothing. God's truth was not invented by men. It was handed down from God to men. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Verses 11 and 12. Apostle Paul explains how he received the gospel. Verses 11 and 12 of Galatians chapter number 1. The Bible tells us there, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. Who taught the Apostle Paul the word of God in the gospel? Christ did. For the three years that the Apostle Paul was in Arabia, many Bible scholars believe. First Corinthians 15 and verses 1 through 6. The Apostle Paul told the Corinthian church that he gave unto them the things which he had received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scripture. And each generation of believers had guarded this truth and passed it on to others. Again, that verse in 2 Timothy we just mentioned, paraphrased just a little bit ago. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and in verse number 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. The Bible says there in 2 Timothy 2 and verse number 2. And the things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Timothy was to take what he had heard, what he had learned among many witnesses, and teach it to faithful men who would turn around and teach it to other faithful men, people, and who would turn around 
And that's how we have the word of God today. By generation to generation to generation of faithful people, faithful men, transmitting God's truth and God's word from generation to generation. And to be able to keep that going, we have the responsibility to give it to the next generation. So that that generation can give it to the next generation. Until the day the Lord comes. Paul clearly stated that the believer's dual responsibility in guarding the truth is to stand fast and hold the traditions of men. The word stand fast there means do not move away from the truth of the gospel. Stand fast. Stay firm. Don't move. In in the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, And in verse number 23, Colossians chapter number 1 and verse number 23. If ye, Colossians 1 and verse 23, if ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. At the Tower of London, where the British crown jewels are held, the Queen's crown is in the Tower of London, priceless jewels and heirlooms there, The tourists are kept moving as they go through there. Brief glimpse, move right along. Kind of reminds us of the panda exhibit that we saw at the San Diego Zoo. We couldn't stay there for very long to see the baby panda. It was just get a glimpse, move along, get a glimpse, move along. Okay, you've seen here. Okay, move along. (laughs) And that's the kind of picture I get here. And the tourists are kept moving, but the guards stand perfectly still. They are constantly watching the visitors, and nothing could move them from their appointed spot. You've seen those guards at Buckingham Palace, too. They're the same way. People have tried to get them to move, tried to get them to smile, tried to get them, you know, tried to make sure they're human. But they're trained not to move. They're trained to stay right where they have been placed. And you and I are helping to guard the precious faith. And we must not be moved by the wiles of Satan or by the praises of men. If we can stand, then we can hope. We'll finish with this thought tonight. This word that means hold fast means to hold firmly. It is related to the Greek word that means strength, might, power. We are told not to hold the truth carelessly, but to grasp it firmly with power and never let it slip from us. Each generation, each generations of Christian, each generation of Christians must receive the truth from the other and guard it. And make sure it is kept intact for the next generation. It's not easy to stand and hold because forces around us want us to want to move us from the faith.
Satan loves this COVID-19. He really does. Because it's keeping God's people at home. So I'm praying and we'll pray later that it will go away <laughs> quickly. And Satan knows how to use lies to oppose God's truth. And he seeks to do this within the fellowship of believers and in the church. If you go over to Acts chapter 20, and we'll finish with this thought tonight. Acts chapter 20, and in verse number 28, Paul is saying goodbye before he sets sail to the elders, the pastors of the churches at Ephesus. And he gives them stern warning here. He says there in verse 28, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking for verse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one, every one night and day with tears. But now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Paul warned the church at Ephesus, when I depart, the wolves are in the bushes and they're going to come out. And they're going to scatter the flock. I'm wondering after this COVID-19 is all settled down and we all get back to be able to be within five feet of each other. And those who have missed church for two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, because we don't know. The end of April is not a certainty. How many believers will come back? And how many will stay away? Because of the wolves. You get out of the habit of doing something, and it takes about three weeks to either form a habit or get rid of a habit, most experts say. So if a person's been going to church, and all of a sudden they're not going to church, they're filling their life with other things, aren't they? Probably. Sure. And those other things tend to take precedent now. Because church has been out of the way. Assembling together has been out of the way. Because of this terrible virus. So it'll be a lot easier for them to stay out of church. Stay away from the Lord, stay away from the things of God. And even though they're still in their homes, and even though they can't go to Florida, they'll still find other things to fill their time. Satan would love that. <coughs> the wolves are there. Sometimes they wear nice suits and sometimes they stand behind pulpits and sometimes they teach 
false things from the Word of God. Where all of those wonderful Christians are staying home, watching them on TV. They should be watching me on YouTube. And this time especially, we need to pray for each other. Reach out, make calls. Do what we need to do to be able to keep the flock together. Appreciate your time and attention tonight.